I can guarantee you, you've never seen me do what I'm about to do in this video here before. And that is spray paint track. Today we're hopping back on the MRR2 Project Railroad for the base coat of paint. Now, typically when I do a base coat of paint, I will use just regular old household latex paint. I actually keep a gallon of just some cheap household interior flat latex paint in the color that I like on hand for these type of situations. But with this layout only being one foot wide by six feet long, it's pretty easy to justify using a can of spray paint. So we're going to use that, plus I'm going to show you how I spray paint rails to make them look weathered and rusted. So let's go ahead and get to it. The main thing we need to do is protect the turnouts. The rest of this can be repainted or it's not really going to be that big of an issue, but the turnouts, we need to make sure that all the electrical points are okay and solid. So we're gonna take some painter's tape and we're gonna cover them up for when we do spray paint. Spray painting the rest of the track is not gonna be an issue. We just have to make sure we clean off the top so that the connections are great. So let's get started. Now for these large double sections, I'm just gonna cover the entire section of track. There's no point in trying to be skimpy. I've got plenty of tape, so we're gonna go ahead and just cover everything up right there. I'm gonna make sure we get the frogs and everything. And then you wanna make sure that you press it down really, really good. We wanna make sure that we are protecting those points. I go through the process of taping up the remaining turnouts. And again, since they are so close, I just tape them up as one unit. All right, everything is protected and we're gonna paint the entire top. I'm not gonna worry about painting the front or the back and the sides that are gonna be the fascia because I'm still gonna do something else with that. But we're gonna go ahead and start spraying. Just a quick reminder, make sure that you do this in a well-ventilated space. Don't need to be hoffing any fumes or anything like that. That's actually the reason why I'm doing it in my garage because when I'm done, I can just open this thing up and vent everything out. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and partially open my garage for venting the fumes. Now, one thing about this is we are painting the rails. Now, one thing you want to make sure you have on hand is something to wipe the tops of the rails off so that you can still get an electrical connection. I've just got some paper towels right here. You can use something like a shop towel or whatever you have on hand, just as long as you're ready to quickly clean off the tops of the rails after the coat of paint has gone on them. So, but for that reason also, we're going to go ahead and spray paint everything else around so that the last thing that we do is the rails and we don't have to worry about any paint spatter after we painted the rails. So let's get started. Now, the first thing I will say is that I do not recommend using purely spray paint for a base coat on a large project. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not very cost effective. You'll notice that I'm giving the track a wide margin when I'm painting. I do not want to get any of my paint on the track until I'm ready for that. All right, so now we're ready to paint the rails. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on this process. I've got my paper towel ready. I'm gonna put it way over here and we're gonna to get to painting this section. Let's go ahead and get started. I am doing short bursts of painting. This is so that my paint coat on the rails is as even as I can possibly make it. This also gives me a lot more control over the paint. As soon as I'm done painting, I need to wipe the top of the rails clean. I use the paint can lid with a paper towel wrapped around it so that I can have a flat surface to wipe the paint with. Once I've done the entire railroad, I'll let it dry. All right, everything is pretty dry. There's still some wet spots, but I can go ahead and start working on it. So now it's time to go ahead and paint those turnouts. I'll be using micro brushes and simple brown acrylic paint to paint the rails. We can now remove the tape and get to painting. And this is a bit tedious. When painting, you'll want to get the micro brush into the web of the rail and try to avoid the top of the rail as much as possible. If your track has black ties, you'll want to paint the ties here as well. You will paint the inside and outside web of the rail, and I would just avoid the points where the turnout mechanism contacts the other track. 
Now, I ended up deciding to spray paint the rest of the turnouts except for where the points contact the rails. So I grabbed my tape again and just taped over the extremely sensitive parts. If you don't feel comfortable spray painting parts of the turnout, go ahead and continue to use the micro brush technique. I did one last bit of paint and then wiped the top of the rails clean. And there it is, nice and painted. I'm probably just gonna let the ballasting whenever I do it, just kind of cover up the areas to where I had it taped off, but there you go. Painting your track is something that you may have never thought of doing before, but it's what a lot of the big timers in the industry do to make their model railroad look even more realistic. It's just one of those little things you can do to add a little bit more realism to your layout. Now you have to do it during this phase of construction because you can't come back and use an airbrush or anything like that on it. You'd have to use pure micro brushes or paint pens or things like that. And that would probably be a nightmare depending on the size of your layout. So if you're building your layout and you want to paint your track, now is the time to do it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.